Hello, this lecture is for students taking Anatomy and Physiology 1 with Gina Piscatelli at Madison College. In it, we will review acids and bases as well as pH, which you learned in general chemistry already. Something that might be new for you are buffers. These are mixtures of compounds that help us maintain a homeostatic pH within our body fluids. The first item in your study guide asks you to be able to define the terms acid, base, and pH. Because you've already had this, I'm sure it's not new to you, but let's review them just in case. An acid is any chemical compound that donates hydrogen ions to a solution. That means the hydrogens come off the compound and float freely within the solution. So an acid increases the number of free hydrogen ions in a solution. In short, we call acids proton donors or hydrogen ion donors. A base is any chemical compound that accepts hydrogen ions from a solution. So it binds free hydrogen ions and they're not free anymore. They're not floating in solution. They become part of the compound. For short, we call a base a proton acceptor or a hydrogen ion acceptor. In addition, another word for a base is an alkali, and you'll see that term a little bit later. pH is a value that reflects the concentration of free hydrogen ions in a solution. It is calculated, and to calculate it, you have to take into account the concentration of acid, concentration of base, and the concentration of free hydrogens. You also mathematically take the logarithm of a ratio and invert it with this negative symbol. So mathematically shorthand, pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration and that hydrogen ion concentration is symbolized by the brackets around H+. Don't worry, we're not in a math class or a chemistry class. You won't have to calculate pH. We will just refer to pH a value, a certain value of pH. So pH values are in a scale ranging from 0 to 14. A pH of 7 right in the middle is neutral. So a solution that has a pH of 7 is considered neither acidic nor basic. In fact, a solution with a pH of 7 probably has equal concentrations of free hydrogen ions and base. If a solution has a pH from 0 up to 7, it is considered acidic. If a solution has a pH above 7 to 14, it's considered basic. Because that method of calculating these values, the pH values, involves taking a logarithm, the difference between two units on the scale, such as between 1 and 2, actually differ in hydrogen ion concentration by 10 times, not just twice the amount or half of the amount, but 10 times difference. So that if you have a pH with a solution of, or a solution with a pH of 4 compared to a solution with a pH of 3, there's a tenfold increase from 4 to 3 in hydrogen ions. And if you compared pH 4 to pH 1, 
there would be a thousand fold increase in hydrogen ion concentrations. Throughout this class, we often describe a body fluid or a solution's pH just in terms of acidic or basic. Sometimes we'll even refer to the solution's pH in terms of free hydrogen ion concentration as being high or low. Now that can get a little tricky if you're in a rush because low pH means high hydrogens and high pH means low hydrogens. Remember there's an inverse relationship between the pH value and the number of hydrogen ions. I'm hoping that this image helps you understand that when you have a solution with a low pH that you actually have a lot of hydrogen ions. A lot of hydrogen ions. If you have a pH that's very high, then you have fewer hydrogen ions. On a more practical note, you come into contact with acids and bases in everyday life. You don't even think about it. Some of these include wine and vinegar that you cook with. These are relatively strong acids. They have um, a pH ranging between two and a half and three and a half. And then cleaners, household cleaners like ammonia, bleach, oven cleaner, those are relatively strong bases. At least compared to like egg whites, those are weaker bases. A solution with a pH of 7 is considered neutral. Pure water is a good example of a neutral solution in terms of pH. Now at room temperature, water ionizes. Not all the molecules, actually 1 in 10 million, will spontaneously ionize. And what that means is that water breaks apart and forms a hydrogen ion and a hydroxyl ion. So a hydroxyl ion is an OH negative, an anion. So really if you look at it, water is sort of both acidic and basic in the sense that it has usually a volume of water, has a few free hydrogen ions, but also a few free basic compounds, that hydroxyl group. Now pH is important in anatomy and physiology because the molecules in our bodies function best at a particular pH. When pH changes, the proteins in a body fluid or a structure in the body change shape. The structure changes of proteins due to changes in pH. With altered structure, a protein may become non-functional. This can be particularly serious in a group of proteins called enzymes. So with changes in pH, enzyme structure may be altered and therefore enzymes might not function correctly. The reason enzymes are so important is because they catalyze particular chemical reactions in the body. So those reactions won't happen correctly if the enzymes are not functioning correctly. So it's important to keep a certain pH value in all of our body fluids and our cells um, to keep the chemical reactions happening correctly. Now to, to guard against changes in pH, our body uses buffer systems. Buffers are anything that can resist changes in pH. It could be a chemical 
or it could be an organ system, and I'll talk about that in, in just a minute. Buffers are particularly important in blood pH because uh, the set point for pH of blood is very narrow. It needs to stay between 7.35 and 7.45. Deviations from this range in blood pH, like lower than 7.35 or higher than 7.45, can cause tremors, paralysis, and even death primarily because the nervous system is affected and that will change breathing. Your study guide asks that you know the definitions of acidemia and alkalemia. So I'm going to break down what these words are. These are pH imbalances and em, e -M, that root, refers to blood and the suffix IA refers to condition of. So emia is the condition of the blood. So of course acidemia is the condition of acidic blood. Alkalemia is a condition of basic or alkaline blood. If blood pH goes below 7.35 you can get all sorts of symptoms like chest pain, headache, weakness, bone pain, etc. So lots of different side effects which you'll study a lot more in a and P2. And in alkalemia the most common cause of having high blood pH is hyperventilation and you often get muscle cramps. Again we will talk about those two conditions more when we do the circulatory system in a and P2. In our course what becomes important are chemical buffers. Chemical buffers are um, it, mixtures. So um, one thing to keep in mind when we talk about the ability to buffer changes in pH is that throughout um, the day all the medical metabolic processes that happen in our body often produce acid both the respiratory system and the urinary system can get rid of excess acid. So that's ideal. But we also need to have chemical solutions in localized positions throughout the body to deal with small changes in pH. And so these chemical buffers are a mixture of two compounds, a weak acid and a weak base. The weak acid resists changes in pH, particularly an increase in pH, by acting as a reservoir for hydrogen ions. So a weak acid will reluctantly let go of the hyd hydrogen ion. The other component of a chemical buffer is a weak base and it resists um, decreases in pH, things from becoming too acidic. By acting as a reservoir for a base, like a hydroxide ion or a hydroxyl group that can bind up hydrogens so that the pH will rise back up again. So the example in the blood that's the most important is the bicarbonate buffer system. It is composed again of a weak acid and a weak base <clears throat> and the weak acid is carbonic acid, H2CO3. It can release hydrogen ions into the blood if pH gets too high. The weak base is called sodium bicarbonate and sodium bicarbonate releases HCO3 which can bind up a hydrogen ion when um, the blood becomes too acidic. So it, the combination of these two, they don't act simultaneously, they act to do two opposing things and they keep the blood or another body fluid within a certain range. Now buffers do work best at a specific pH range. So I'm going to talk about how pH varies throughout the body 
you don't really have to memorize this, but we know that blood pH has this tight range of 7.35 to 7.45. The cerebral spinal fluid is a little bit more acidic than that, so that's a different range. Your cytoplasm inside all of your cells has a different set point for pH. So does lymphatic fluid, urine, there's a lot of, well, urine not so much. Um, gastric juice is very acidic. So if you have a buffer working in any of those regions, it needs to work ideally for that pH range. And so we're just going to look here at how um, buffers help in changes in pH and how you notice that they work best within a range. So the first thing to understand this concept is to look at the orange line. That line represents a solution that doesn't have a chemical buffer in it. There is no chemical buffer. The solution starts out a pH of 3. And then we slowly add base to it. And as we add the base, you would expect that the pH would rise, and it does so. It continues to rise following that orange line upward. So when you've almost reached twice the amount of base, you're above a pH of 9. You started at 3 and you're above a pH of 9. So that's how, what happens to a solution that's been exposed to a base and it doesn't have a buffer. In the opposite situation, like in our body fluids, we have buffers. So the blue line shows a solution that contains a buffer. If we start at exactly the same initial pH of 3, and now we add base, notice that the pH will not rise as quickly. It does initially. It rises sort of steeply. But then its ideal range kicks in, and as you add more and more base, all the way from 1 all the way to 5, so we started at 0, we go all the way to 5, and you add more and more base, notice that the pH barely changes right here. That's not a very steep slope. But once you get to a certain point, the buffer can't work anymore. If you're over, this is just an, a hypothetical, but if you're over five times the amount of original base, then, you know, you're going to get huge increases in pH. So this just shows us that not only do buffers help in reducing changes in pH, but they also act best within a specific range. That's all for the pH, acid-base pH lecture, and we'll talk more about it next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you.